All right, Bill. Well, it is the union battle that could very well set a precedent for the rest of this country. And that is why what's going on in Wisconsin is so very important in America today, folks. The Wisconsin Assembly, as you saw that raucous video that we showed you, they just passed a bill that would take away many collective bargaining rights in Wisconsin. And now that bill moves over to the Senate. But good luck passing it there because the Democrats have left the Senate, as has been well documented here. But a Tea Party activist in Illinois tracked some of them down there recently and questioned questioned them about what they're doing. Take a look. Sir, should you be in Wisconsin fulfilling your constitutional responsibilities? No, sir, can you just answer one question, sir? We would appreciate if you could just answer the taxpayers of Wisconsin. They elected you to fulfill your duties as a res responsible senator. Well, there you have it. Wisconsin state troopers also went house to house trying to track them down at their homes. There were some reports that they were crossing back into Wisconsin to maybe shower and change and then head back across the border. They did not find any of them. They only need one of these Democrats to be in the House to force a vote on this. So for now, it appears that all 14 of them are continuing to hold out because they cannot get a compromise on collective bargaining from the governor. That is the crux of the remaining issue there. My next guest is the man that you saw in that first video confronting the senators. David Hale is a member of the Rockford, Illinois Tea Party. Uh, Mr. Hale, welcome. Good to have you here this morning. Thank you. Good to be here. So how do you respond to people who say that, that you are stalking these people and, and scaring them? Well, I don't think we're scaring them. Uh, I think we're just trying to st stand up for the American taxpayers of Wisconsin. So tell me a little bit about, you know, what your plan is from here and where the last place is that your folks, you can, you know, because you're making this your, your duty of the day. Where did you last spot them? Where are they now? They were last spotted in Woodstock, Illinois, in a subdivision. Apparently, they'd been in the subdivision for the last three days on and off for different kinds of meetings. We don't know for sure if they've been sleeping there or not, but we do know that they've been there in this subdivision. And then there was some word that they were going to try to meet the senators from Indiana who have followed their, the, the Wisconsin senator's lead in uh, advocating their constitutional duty to uh, their states. And how, how do the people in Illinois feel? I mean, they've got, I think, almost close to 50, uh, when you add them all up, representatives from, from Wisconsin and from Indiana are all in your home state of Illinois right now. Yeah, it seems like it's a sanctuary state for uh, renegade fleeing senators. So talk to me a little bit about what happens now. You know, I mean, how long do you think they're going to they're going to stick out, you know, this Illinois part of their plan? And what what will budge? What do you think is going to be the catalyst to send them back eventually? Well, I, it, it, a couple of things come into play. We're wondering where they're getting their money from. And they're saying that they're not getting it from the unions. And so when they start to run out of money, because apparently the Wisconsin Senate passed a bill that they would have to pick up their, uh, their paychecks. Right. So if they are paying for it out of their own pockets, they're going to have to get back to Wisconsin to pick up their paychecks, which are locked in their desks in the Senate, uh, on the Senate floor. Um, other than that, I'm not sure. I think one of the ways that the Wisconsin Senate can pass this bill is to, to divide the bill up so that it doesn't include anything that costs taxpayers funds, which would, requ which would not require a quorum, and they could pass this and get this whole crisis that they're in over with, and these senators could return home. Oh, that's interesting. I, you know, do you think that's likely, though? I mean, is it possible to parse out this bill so that it doesn't affect I taxpayers in any way? Because that's what this is all about, isn't it? Yeah, that is what it's all about, uh, the taxpayers. And uh, it, it is possible. I'm sure that the, uh, the, the officials in Wisconsin are looking at that. Uh, but, you know, the, the pendulum needs to swing back toward the taxpayers on this issue. And we, we, you know, we certainly don't want to deprive teachers or public employees of their fair pay. But, tax, you know, I think they need to have compassion for taxpayers. It's time for unions to have compassion for taxpayers. And it's time for these senators to fulfill their constitutional responsibility instead of, uh, you know, subverting their constitution. I mean, their constitution yep. is modeled at the United States Constitution, and it's worked for years, and, and, and they should go back and, and do their duty. Do you know, if they catch them in Wisconsin, we saw these troopers going around. This is a last quick question for you, if you can. Uh, what will they do? I mean, can they haul them out of their house? Can they arrest them for what they're doing, or do they just have to incur would they encourage them to go back? Well, the rumors are that they could... Uh, they could force them back to the floor. Mm -hmm. I have not, I, I'm not sure what the internal politics of, 
of it all is. Uh, apparently, it is a violation of some sort of a code. Yeah. Um, apparently, they could be arrested if they were not in session. Something right. to that effect. Interesting. David Hale, thanks very much. Uh, we'll keep uh, watching you. what you're up to, and we'll see when these folks decide that they've run out of money, they need to head home and collect their check, I guess. Thank you, David Hale.